since we're at the hour. All right. Welcome, everyone. It's 10 o'clock, ready to start uh, our um, Utah Lake Technical um, Committee Commission meeting. Committee. Yep, committee. Um, um, I'm Carrie Malkovich. I am the vice chair of the, com of the committee. I am a councilwoman for the city of Woodland Hills. Um, so welcome today. And I think we should take a minute because we haven't seen each other very often and, and on Zoom to just quickly introduce yourself to the rest of the group. Scott, how about we start with you? Hey, I'm Scott Bird and I work with the Utah County Public Works Engineering Division. Okay, uh, Dilworth. Saratoga Springs Owners Association. Um, let's see, I, T, is it TJ Munger? It's hard to tell from just your, your uh, the way your name is on the screen. <laughs> yeah, sorry, uh, Todd Munger. Todd. Good to be here this morning on this snowy cold day. Um, I uh, am the Environmental Sustainability Director for Lehigh City. So, okay, uh, Mark Farmer, you got to unmute yourself. There we go. For some reason I clicked it three times. Uh, Habitat Manager at Division of Wildlife Resources. Wonderful. Juan? Juan Garrido. I'm now with uh, Linden City. I'm their uh, Public Works Director. Good to see you all again. Oh, that's nice. Um, Sullivan. Hi, uh, Sullivan Love. I'm with Vineyard City. I'm the Water Systems Manager and, and previously overseeing uh, parks and irrigation. So I'm representative for Keith. Hey everybody, I'm Keith Lawrence and I'm the Native Aquatics Project Leader with the Division of Wildlife Resources. Corey? Corey Pierce, I'm with Spanish Fork City. I manage the Wastewater Division. Reed? Uh, Reed Price, Orm City uh, Maintenance Division Manager. Uh, the on Andres, Anders. Hi, I'm Anders Bake. I'm Anders. with Linden City. Okay. Morgan. Good morning, Morgan Faulkner with Forestry Science State Lands. Okay. Shelley. Shelley Trumbo, Provo City Public Works. Ren. I'm Ren Lambert with Limnotech in Ann Arbor, Michigan. All right. And Soren. Hi, Soren Simonson with the Jordan River Commission. Okay. And then, of course, Sam and Eric, I don't know if you need to introduce yourself, if you know everybody here, but give a shout out. I'm Eric Ellis uh, with the Utah Lake Commission. And Sam Brager with Utah Lake Commission. Wonderful. Thank you all for introducing yourselves for a minute. Um, I hope you've had a chance to review the minutes from December 9th of 2020. Um, is there any, is there a motion to accept these minutes or is there any uh, discussion on those minutes? If there's no discussion, I move that we accept the minutes from the technical committee meeting held on December 9th. Thank you. Sullivan, is there a second? I'll second. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 All right. We um, accept those, those minutes. Thank you. Um, Roundtable updates from committee members. Eric, how do, how do we? So I was what I was hoping for was was those that are members uh, or if you were representing. Um, an interest that, that is doing any kinds of projects on the lake, uh, maybe ones that are not specifically mentioned on the agenda. We would love to hear about any projects that, that have an impact on the lake 
for good or for bad so that we could discuss those and, and be aware of them. All right, does that apply to any of you? If, you, if it does, uh, unmute yourself and tell us uh, what you're doing. I'm looking to see who's unmuting. This is Corey with Spanish Fork. Um, we're not doing anything directly on the lake, but we are uh, in the process of designing a new treatment plant, which will have some good impact on the lake um, as far as nutrients and the other requirements of the state. So we're, we're in the process of uh, getting our early design going and selecting a CMGC contractor. So uh, we will be starting that about a year from now, actual construction and by January of 2025 or end of 24, we'll be completing that. So, at the same location, Corey, or are you going to move it to a different location? Um, our salts handling will stay at the same treatment or at the same location, but the wet treatment will be across the street, a new greenfield site. And, um, it'll be a lot better. Our, our infrastructure is old and not really reliable at times, as, as I think you know, Juan. So, great. Any other updates that aren't on the agenda? There's, I, I had a quick question for Corey, if, if I could. Mm -hmm. uh, we're aware that Spanish Fork is doing some pretty cool low impact development uh, throughout the city and especially in any of the new development. Is that something that we could maybe have you or someone from the city that's that's been really close to that talk about to this group, maybe at, a, sure. at our next meeting? Yeah, I was involved in some early on stuff with the engineering department. Um, they've evolved some since I was involved, but uh, I can certainly present some of those things or, or have some of our uh, group in engineering talk about where we've kind of ended up with things. So yeah, let me know when and I can arrange that. For sure. It, it's something that, that does impact Utah Lake. It, it, it directly impacts the stormwater and how it reaches the lake, whether that be through the ground cleaned up or through, you know, the end of a pipe, you know, usually unfiltered. It's, it's pretty cool technology and, and would be a fun thing to know more about and know how you've kind of mixed that with your uh, existing infrastructure versus your new development. That would be. Sure. Corey, our next meeting is on April 21st. So uh, Eric, can we put him on the agenda for that day? Absolutely. Okay. Right. Are there any other updates uh, that are not on the agenda that you would like to let us know about? Well, Lyndon is uh, finishing, push, push, putting the finishing touches on the stormwater master plan. And uh, I guess we're going to be working with uh, other cities upstream to try to do better water quality. And there was a conversation then with Eric, who was going to get us a ton of money to, to clean the water before it goes to the lake. I don't know how that went. We're, we're waiting to hear, hear back from our grant. Okay. <laughs> Grants, appropriations, and it all comes together and <laughs> we cross our fingers, don't we? All right, anyone else? Give you a moment to unmute yourself. Keith, there anything there. new on in our, in our upstream work for June Sucker that could Help out anything new on Hobble Creek or developments maybe with the Provo River Delta project? There are, I, I didn't mention them at this time only because they were already on the agenda. But so I don't know if we want to wait till we're at that part of the agenda to talk about them or. We, we could wait, yeah. We just get excited, don't we? Talk about all the new things. All right, if there's no others, if I mean, if, if there is something that you were able to get off, let us know, but we'll go forward with our agenda. Um, progress on the lake related, uh, on progress on lake related projects, I can say it. Saratoga Springs, um, Eric, are you giving that update? Yeah, do we have anybody Saratoga Springs on the call? Like, if not- No, we don't have Saratoga on right now. So I've, I've just got a, a presentation that I could share that kind of talks about a few of these items. So you, you guys are seeing the presentation mode now. 
Yes. We're seeing your screen like the shows the next slide. Oh, well. You're just giving us a teaser for what comes next, right? <laughs> Let me try that again. Share screen. How's that? There you go. Perfect. Great. Okay. Sorry for not having the teaser now, but. And it's sort of. Okay. So right now, uh, one of the big projects that's taking place as we speak is a uh, trail development in Saratoga Springs. Uh, this is to bring what was the historic canal that was built and used for maybe a year or two. I, I guess I don't know the history as well as I should um, during the major drought to get water over to the Jordan River. Uh, and ever since has been just kind of a problem along that lakeshore because it, it mm -hmm. grows vegetation uh, and is very difficult to, to get in there and treat because it's oftentimes the terminus of storm drains. So it stays wet even when the lake is really low, it's wet up in that uh, mm -hmm. canal and, and is challenging for our county partners to get in there with machinery or, or trucks or anything to, to get rid of the tamarisk and the uh, Russian olives and the Phragmites that just is packed in there. And so after lots of work, Saratoga Springs was able to get a permit to pull that canal back and put the trail on top of, of the, what once was the canal, you know, berm on the east side of the canal is now getting pulled back up to the, to the historic bank of the lake. And they'll build that new trail up on top of that. And we'll be able to have just a contiguous shoreline out to the lake that's much easier to manage, much easier to do restoration work. And so we're really excited for them for that. And they're expecting that that uh, work along the shoreline with the trail will be completed. Oh, I think it was March, mid sometime in March of this year that they'll complete that. So they're, they're well underway and, and it'll be exciting to see that completed. <clears throat> So Eric, this is part of the uh, Utah Lake Shoreline Trail, so it will connect on the other sides? Correct, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it ties into the existing Saratoga Springs community slash shoreline trail, since that's where they happen to be located. And this will, will connect a large, a large section that historically you've had to kind of work your way through the community uh, in a non, not a super easy way to, or intuitive way to follow along the trail since you kind of jump between uh, community streets and trails. So um, pretty exciting project. And that will be done in March of this year? Uh, well, let's say I think spring, it may have been spring. May, if I remember correctly. Oh, yeah, yeah. May. Okay. May of this year. Wonderful. That's so all right. Far. Hey, Sarah, um, this is Sarah with Saratoga Springs. Who's doing that project? Saratoga Springs. Oh, we are. The city is. OK. Yeah. And who's funding it? You're, I, I, I don't know. I assume that the city is funding it. This, oh, this, okay. was a, this was a project. We were hoping to get Saratoga Springs to present. And so I, I requested that Saratoga Springs. Is it possible MAG might be doing the funding? It could be a MAG partnership, uh, but it's been, been in the, the pipeline for a long time. Lots of work. The, the commission kind of helped work through some of the permitting issues. Forestry, Fire, and State Lands were a major partner on this one. And uh, we heard from Jeremy Lappin probably two months ago that it had gotten the green light and construction was, was beginning. Oh, yeah, Jeremy would be the one who has all the details. I'll just ask him, sorry. Okay, <laughs> no, I... I'm just not up to speed. Um, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy would know for sure. Okay. Only yeah, we've reason. been working. We've been working with Chris out of your um, office, and then um, Acme Constructions, the one <clears throat> doing the project. This is Jamie with Forestry Fire and State Lands. Thank you, Jamie. Yeah. Yeah. Any other comments on this um, project that anyone knows about? I might. Uh, this is Soren at the Jordan River Commission. I might just uh, mention that. Um, you, many of you might be familiar, and I know some of your organizations have participated in the past in our Golden Spoke event, which 
um, is an annual event now. We're, we're just starting the planning for our fourth annual um, Golden Spoke in May, which is bike month. But I think it'd be fantastic to feature this section of trail if it's completed by then. Uh, we don't have the date finalized and we may, depending on how things go with vaccination rollout and everything, we may do it more of a virtual event like we did last year, um, where we just kind of share maps and encourage people to get out on their own. We're not sure if we'll do a, an organized event, but uh, I'd love to get a little bit more information and include it in some of our planning. We'll stay close to it and share any information on completion with you and 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 part, stay close to Saratoga on this one. Yeah, and yeah, Jer we've Jeremy Lappin is our public works director, and um, I can I can get up to speed on it as well if you guys want to contact me or him for anything. Okay. In the past, we've mostly focused on the Provo and the Murdoch Canal trails as part of the Golden Spoke, but I, you know, it's great to see more of this trail at Utah Lake being completed. And uh, I, I think it'd be really fantastic to start to feature that as part of this event. And sorry, I don't actually know who's talking right now. Soren sorry, Simon. it's Soren, Soren oh. Simonson, the director oh, of the Jordan okay. River Commission. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, news or updates on the three TTAB projects, Saratoga Springs, American Fork, and Vineyard. So again, we're, I was hoping that, that those representatives from the cities uh, could talk a little bit about these. Uh, these are, you know, not, not starting immediately. We know that Vineyards is kind of the, the furthest along and they're, they're kind of getting some of their work done, but uh, Saratoga Springs is, is uh, expected to kind of be a 2022 type project. American Fork Marina, a 2023 project. Um, but if we have representatives, I know we have Saratoga Springs. Um, any status updates on, on these projects in particular? I can speak to the vineyard. All right. So we've continued our beach cleanup, removing Phragmites and uh, the invasive species and silting or shifting, sifting the sand and cleaning that up at the current beach. Edge Homes Lakefront Townhome Condominium Project. They are in the process of realigning our, or at least installing our 300 West, which after that is paved, the south portion of the old lake, uh, the old vineyard road that goes alongside the lake will be removed. That area will be regraded and vegetated. Also, they're extending further north the trail that flagship installed down on the beach, and then that will come back up to the, the top elevation. They'll install a, a bridge over the outfall of the Lake Bottom Canal and the stormwater discharge there. After our 300 West is paved, obviously that traffic will be rerouted down that, down that new road. Sylvan, you cut out for a second there. Oh, what, yes. where, did, where did you lose me? Sylvan, when you have your head turned the one way or the other, it goes off and on. So, um. okay. So anyway, they'll they'll continue building trail, connect the two trails, the existing county trail with the new trail that Lake uh, that the uh, flagship installed last year, with the bridge over that outfall of the uh, Lake Bottom Canal, and our storm drain system, and then uh, we are continuing with planning and design work on the rest of our lakefront. Uh, improvement projects. So will that Boat Harbor master plan, um, this is just a section of this or is this completing oh. all of it? So that's actually American Fork. Ours is kind of down on the lower left of the- All uh, right. The Do you anticipate there. having a, a Boat Harbor or just uh, this um, lakefront improvement? Those designs have not fully been developed. Uh, so we don't have all of that information currently. Thank you. Are there any other questions about the vineyard project? Don't see any. Is there anyone from Saratoga Springs to talk about their marina project? Um, I can tell you what I know, but I might not be totally informed. So I know that the city and the Le and Lehigh and the county are considering um, 
going in on some improvements together and I don't know where that's that's gone. So I heard that a few months ago, so I don't know if there's been anything recent. Uh, the city has a conceptual master plan, but it's it's probably not realistic because they put like a little island in the, in the middle of the marina. Um, and Sarah, this is the, the city, city marina down on the south end of town that, that received the, the oh. tax advisory <laughs> grant for the extra dike and, and beach addition. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, in here. We, we, um, we have a marina on the north now, but we won't be able to open that to the public for a while until we do some improvements. So, yeah, yeah. Um, the one on the south, um, well, I know that there's going to be an additional jetty in the beach area and um, a parking expansion. So I know that much. No word on, on um, contractors or construction dates or anything like that yet? Um, I haven't been, uh, you know what, I can, I, um, sorry, I'm not informed. So it's possible that it's all underway, but I'm not informed. I can, I'd have to get back to you. Okay, something that we'd love to hear about at the next meeting. Okay. Thank you. And is, was there anyone from American Fork that joined us after our introductions? Not that I can see. All right, then we continue. Um, and, that, and that one is the furthest one out is at this point, they're kind of gathering their, their match funds for that one. And, and so it was intended to be a couple years out so that they would have time to get that pulled together. And, and that'll be the first phase of that master plan improvement that was funded. All right. Um, Scott is not on from DWQ. Is there anyone else to talk about the Utah Lake Water Quality Study? I, I could take this one. So uh, right now, the the biggest changes or, or the things that we're looking at, uh, a new facilitator was hired at the start of the year. Uh, the previous uh, facilitator had a, I think, a three-year contract and that contract had come to an end. And so it had to, had to go through an RFP process again. Uh, we were really happy with the first uh, consultant. Uh, but really it came down to, you know, very close between them and one other firm. And, and this one came through um, largely based on, on the cost side of things. Uh, they're, they seem like a very qualified group. They're, they're called Peak Facilitation. Uh, they're reaching out to both our steering committee and the science panel. Um, Steering committee members are made up of some of those in within our, our technical committee here. Uh, so they'll be reaching out to kind of get to know folks and then scheduling some meetings coming up. Uh, I wanted, I'll be sharing this presentation with the group. Uh, the, we have the two links to our pilot studies that took place this last summer, uh, both from ATS that took place in the Linden Marina and then CPRO, uh, which I did treatments both in Utah Lake State Park and Lincoln Marina, this, the county marina. So the, the full final reports on those are both on these links. And you can have those to look through and see how the kind of success that they had besides just what we were able to observe. All right, thank you. We will continue with Eric as, on the director's updates. Okay, so the Wakara Way project or, or I'll start with lake level. We're two and a half feet below full. Uh, the lake's filling a little bit. We, we know we don't have a lot of snow in the mountains, but these later latest storms have at least brought us up to, uh, and Mike might know, have, have better info than I, but we're in the 70% range from what I uh, saw the other day uh, for snowpack. So still 30% below just average which is not a great place to be, uh, but the lake is not, you know, we're not starting from a really terrible place. So maybe we get, you know, not too far from full this year. Mike, any, we, I, I think we're probably gonna talk about uh, lake levels, but any predictions for us yet? Um, I haven't seen the forecast for Utah Lake specifically, but yeah, I think our snowpack is, is up into the 70% range, um, which is good. Someone finally turned winter on and, and we're getting some snow. Uh, we just need it to continue without stopping for the next month or so. 
but yeah. it probably won't happen. Um, soil moisture is, is really low, which, which means even if we got an average snowpack, we would get a little bit less than normal runoff, um, which is not great. Um, but like you said, Utah Lake's not, not starting real low. Um, I think we're about 2.7 feet below compromise right now, and hopefully we'll gain a little bit more um, before it peaks in April or so. So um, despite the, the terrible winter, um, we're not in a real bad place for Utah Lake. Thank you. Uh, Walk Her Away project, uh, we, we are seeing progress here and excited about it. The first 50 acres of the project uh, was just completed for fencing. Uh, we're in, getting some, some a final set of gates installed at, on the east side of that project. Mm -hmm. There's gates on all corners of the project, including pedestrian passageways uh, that are designed so that people can get through, but cows won't. Uh, as soon as those final gates get put in, we'll be in a position to get some cattle down there to start grazing and, and it'll be the, the demonstration site for how it looks post grazing. Uh, we also were able to apply for some additional funding for fencing uh, to expand to the next phase of, of grazed area and, and our watershed restoration initiative grant request was uh, was successful as far as ranking. We came in first in our region for um, our ranking criteria or the number on that. And so it is very, very likely to be funded fully. Uh, so that will allow us to continue moving on. We've also got a, a request and we'll talk about it a little further, but we've, we're also kind of approaching it from a state appropriation side to try to get some funding through them as well. Uh, Orem City has lots of fill dirt and have generously offered to provide fill dirt for our Walk Air Away project for some access. Uh, and we're partnering with Vineyard City and Utah County to uh, flatten that material and create the one of the first access roads into that first phase that's been fenced in. Uh, that'll be a sort of a, an occasional use for field trips uh, and have parking for buses and a facility that, that holds some of the maintenance um, machinery and, and it'll have some restrooms there. So the building structure has not been funded yet, but, but with the partnership of, of Orem Vineyard and Utah County, we'll be able to get the road built into that project and the parking lot at least roughed in uh, with the material that, that they're providing. So we're very excited and grateful for their participation on this. As far as uh, Phragmites and shoreline restoration work this year, uh, our, the total request uh, for this year's shoreline restoration work is 671,000 and change. Uh, a portion of that, 124,000 of it, or 125,000 is, is coming through the Department of Agriculture and Food through their Invasive Species Mitigation Program. Uh, they have had some changes. Historically, we kind of had a 50-50 match between the watershed program and the invasive species mitigation program, uh, but they have changed some of their criteria and, and they have caps on their grant requests. Um, but, but this project in particular usually ranks very high with them as well. And so we're hopeful that we get that full 125. And then through the watershed and our other partners, uh, we are hoping to get 550,000, give or take. And with that amount and having marsh masters to use, that will allow for us to finally be treating the entire shoreline on an annual basis so that we can really start not just, you know, treating areas and dealing with, you know, site locations or site issues, but also kind of dealing with it as an entire issue so that we're diminishing that seed bank of Phragmites going forward. So it'll be, it'll be fun to see just how impactful that is. And, and we also are able to put some dollars in for seeding both upland and wetland uh, seed mixes. Uh, as we have seen 
big areas that have come clear of Phragmites and aren't causing problems. And as soon as that happens, it's the prime time to, to get some seeding work done. Uh, and then 100,000 of that is for uh, fencing uh, within that Wakara Way project. It, did anyone have any questions on the watershed before we move on? Uh, wildlife and, and forestry fire and state lands, uh, they have been really good partners on both funding and also helping us kind of work on figuring out what seed mixes to use. Uh, we were able to put on at least a hundred acres of seed in, an, in a large area within that Wakara Way project uh, that didn't have Phragmites growing back. And, and this year will be our year to see just how successful the the mix was at, at growing back faster than, than potentially the Phragmites that at some point could come back. So we'll, we're, we're learning along the way. And Eric? Yes. Could you share that seed mix with me? Uh, we've got some areas that are gonna be doing some reseeding and just wanna kind of compare what their recommendations are with, with what some of our uh, groups yeah. are looking at. Thank For you. For sure, I'll make a quick note of that. Yeah. Legislation, we only have two and a half weeks left to finish, so. We do. Lots to do. <laughs> so uh, there was a Utah Lake appropriate, a Utah Lake Authority Appropriations Bill uh, that was kind of a combination of a number of different, it was really all of our requests and uh, one of the legislators that's sponsoring a bill, uh, their request for, um, the Utah Lake Authority. So it came under that title, but within that Utah Lake Authority appropriations bill was uh, funding for the Wakara Way trail system. So in, in case everybody's not on the same page, Wakara Way, at least the trail uh, portion of it was split into two pieces, phase one, phase two. Phase one this last year was approved for funding through Mountain Land Association of Governments. Um, we still need to come up with our six to seven percent match uh, for that amount, but that was a $4 million grant to complete from Vineyard to Orem, the trail. And then this bill would hypothetically fund the remainder of that trail project that would tie us from Orem down to Provo uh, and tie into that north berm of the Provo River Delta project right there, just west of, of Provo High School. So that was included in the request. It included that 4.4 million uh, includes funding to complete the fencing system and then do some additional improvements that the maintenance building, uh, signage, some enhancements to a couple of the little access points that would have Sandy Beach and so forth. If anybody would like to look at that bill, it's now made public, it's House Bill 364 with Representative Brady Brammer. And, and these are two different ones, just so you oh. know. There's this, so this is the appropriation side. It's just an appropriation oh, bill. And then there's the House Bill uh, 364 that you're referring to as well. All right. Yes, um, I, I was misspoken, thank you. Oh, no, 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 it, it, they're, they're almost the same thing. It's one is funding the other. So, uh, in, so in addition, that 9.8 would also cover 1 million of in, invasive species mitigate or remediation work. So that would be kind of in addition to our WRI, we could focus it on making sure that we have all the right machinery. Uh, we're looking at potentially one more Marshmaster so that we can always have at least two running and, and kind of go through a maintenance cycle so that we've got one that's, that's in the shop, you know, getting maintained while two are out working at all times. They work well in pairs. And then uh, also be, it would allow us to focus more, uh, some additional effort on some uh, reseeding, some adding trees. Last year, we put some trees down in there by the Powell Slough. And it's, it's cool to see some of those taking hold and, and growing back, but there's a lot of work with a 75 mile shoreline that could be done. Uh, and the bill also added three and a half million for marina upgrades. So just so that we're clear, there is a high likelihood that not all of this gets funded. In fact, there's a 
potential <laughs> like last year that none of it gets funded. Uh, our representative that's, that's um, sponsoring the bill is working really hard as it goes through the, the various levels. It went through com the subcommittee and it did not rank really high. Uh, but as it goes through executive appropriations, there will be work done to, to pull at least portions of that into a fundable bill. So we're crossing our fingers that, that we can get some of the, the funding so that we can move ahead with some of the other really critical pieces to uh, getting uh, permits and finalizing some of the legal agreements with landowners in this project area. And then lastly, the Utah Lake Authority legislation that, that Councilwoman Malkovich pointed out, this is HB, and I, I apologize for not having the number there, 364, I started and then didn't write it in yesterday. Uh, this was introduced on Monday of this week. Uh, numerous cities have had a chance to look at the draft portions of that over the last couple weeks and have been submitting uh, edits and adjustments to make that something that could be agreeable to the community. I'm, I'm not sure if everyone's there yet, um, but, but kind of a rough description of what that is, if I could just skip out of this. Um, one second. So I've got just a kind of a a rough uh, summary. So the purpose of the uh, of that bill would be to create what's called the Utah Lake Authority. Uh, it would be uh, essentially in lieu of the Utah Lake Commission. Uh, it would be converting it from a commission to an authority so that it would have the ability to um, pull in funding both from the state and from the local uh, county area. The specifics on how it is funded, at least from the local side, is open to uh, the governing board of this entity to decide. So it gives some suggestions, be those a tax increment, uh, sales tax, uh, fees, sewer rates. Uh, it kind of lists a variety of things that could be looked at and discussed by that board. Uh, and it, and it requires that the board come up with some kind of solution, some, some agreeable uh, funding implement or funding tool uh, by the end of the year, by the end of November of this year. Uh, the purpose of it would be to essentially be what the Utah Lake Commission does, but, but funded and in a, in a master planned way to enhance both water quality and uh, shoreline access improvements and to uh, manage the things happening on the lake. Uh, it, it requires that it put together a, a master plan, um, somewhat like the, the general plan that the Utah Lake Commission has, um, but the, a master plan of what would be, what the budget uh, that that authority would have uh, would, would work on implementing over the coming years. That's sort of in a nutshell what it is. Jamie, you've had a chance to review any thoughts that you'd like to share on it as well. I don't have any thoughts really to share at this time. Um, we are currently as a division reviewing the bill. Um, but yeah, I think you gave a really broad overview of what it would do. I just put a link to the bill in the chat if you would like to access that. Um, also, I know that the mayors are in the county are, are concerned and they've been meeting quite frequently um, to discuss this as well as uh, a lot of the council people. So um, there's, like I said, there's that week and two, two weeks left is all that we have. And, and hopefully we can come to a, um, to a good arrangement that everyone feels comfortable with um, if it's going to go forward. I know a lot of our legislators are on board but it takes all of our voices to make sure that it's um, clarified and amended enough to be, to be helpful for all of us. Yeah. So at this point, we also don't have uh, a clear 
direction we've we've yet to meet as a governing board. It looks like we may meet as a governing board, the Utah Lake Commission, uh, to kind of get a pulse on on where everybody's at, at on the latest iteration of this bill. So at this point, we are also not not for or against. We're kind of neutral on this and trying to be as as productive as we can on on getting folks talking with the bill sponsor and making sure that it is as as councilman. Councilwoman uh, Malkovich mentioned, agreeable to to everyone because it is a big change. So, yes. All right. Are there any other questions with regards to that legislative portion? Sorry, I, uh, this is Soren again at the Jordan River Commission. Yes. Uh, I just put a question in the chat, but I'll just ask it here. Um, what what's the position of all of the cities and partners of the Utah Lake Commission? Do they support this or is that what you're talking about? They're still trying to decide what their support is or if they want to amend it? Yes, as, as governing board members, we were all given a copy of, of the draft previous and able to put in some recommendations with the sponsor, but there's still some, some concerns that uh, some of the cities have. And um, as Jamie said, they're still reviewing the bill. And so it, it, it impacts a lot of people. Um, its intention, I think it is good to bring everyone together in a different form as an um, authority. It uh, would help with funding of things. I don't know how it would change Eric and Sam's position in some of the things that we are currently doing, but uh, yeah, it cuts them. <laughs> um, but uh, it's still up in the air. There are some who are, are um, very adamantly um, have have concerns, I, should, I guess I should say, some strong concerns. Some of the original parts of the bill included uh, land use authority and stuff like that, which would greatly impact uh, vineyards' ability to, for their planning and stuff. Also, some of the sales taxes and stuff like that. Those, those were some of the, a couple of the concerns that Vineyard had, that it would, it would greatly impact us and, and limit our abilities to do some of that. I understand some of those provisions have been taken out and removed, but I don't know where the where the final status, what the final status is. Well, I've got a link in the chat box to pull that up, and and it definitely has gone through quite a few iterations and has has changed a lot. We've I know that at least a couple of our city partners have gone from strongly opposed to oh okay. And, and, and are in a much more comfortable location. And so it's, it's been interesting to see that process unfold and, and see uh, folks come to the table and be willing to, to have some tough conversations and, and, and see a lot of compromise and, and working towards a similar goal. It, you know, from a, from a complete work uh, on the lake to make major improvements it, from that standpoint, it would be a pretty exciting thing to see some of these these major plans. We have we have master plans for just about all our marinas and numerous uh, trail delineations that have yet to be created, and and it would allow for some of those to start to be funded and and rolled out. And from that perspective, to the community, I think it would be pretty exciting to see Utah Lake start to really come to life as far as a. a usable recreational resource here locally in the valley. Its intention is to make it a statewide asset by using statewide money on an ongoing basis. I know that uh, the leagues of cities and towns will be, um, has been reviewing this as well. Um, as Soren, um, was it Soren or Sullivan said that it upsets the, some of the land use authority. That's a, a, a critical part to the cities. And so they will be addressing that on their meeting uh, their legislative policy committee meeting on Monday, and they will be focusing just on this. So it does impact uh, quite a few um, cities with land use and uh, the precedent that it may um, have on other land use in the state. So there's a lot of people looking at it. Any other Sorry, questions? Eric, let, me, let me bring up one other point. Um, I've, and I've had a few conversations with Eric about this. I know in the past, um, the Jordan River Commission has had an interest in participating actively in the Utah Lake Commission. There's a lot of tributaries to Utah Lake, both natural and man-made, but there's only one outlet, and that's the Jordan River. 
And so, you know, everything that affects Utah Lake from water quality to recreation also has a really strong connection to the Jordan River. And if, if um, this legislation opens up a possibility of us being more integrally connected to the Utah Lake Authority than we are right now with the commission, obviously we can participate in meetings. Um, you know, and speak out during public comments. But we've had a long goal uh, with our commission, the Jordan River Commission, to actually be kind of a seat at the table. And so um, this was one that wasn't really on my radar uh, in terms of legislation, but I think it has a, you know, a really significant uh, opportunity and, a, you know, a way for us to be more engaged with what's going on in the community as it yeah. relates to many similar issues from weed management to water quality and everything else. Yeah, we have a, a large board. Uh, we have the governing board of the Lake Commission. We have this technical committee. We have you know, various um, people who are doing studies along the lake. We have our steering committee and our water quality committee. Uh, a lot of people have been involved in this lake. And so the lake authority would limit that. I think it's to 15 people who will have a seat at the table. So not all that currently have a voice would have one. And so that is that also has been a concern, but I can pass on your concern, Soren, as I continue to meet with people on that. Any, other, any other questions? All right, seeing none then Sam, we will turn the time over to you for communications. Thanks, Carrie. I appreciate that. I just wanted to share just one brief update with the committee today that might be of interest. Um, so hopefully you're seeing there our water levels page on utahlakecommission.org. Um, and obviously I can send this link into the chat for everyone. Um, but we just wanted to show that this has recently had kind of a facelift to it and also has some kind of cool new features to it. Uh, a big thank you to Central Utah Water for providing the uh, access to the data to display their same water level data that's on their website, um, specifically for Utah Lake on the Utah Lake Commission website as well. So now anybody can sign in here and refresh on a regular basis and check what the water levels are at the lake, as well as um, access to the grass for the last, I believe it's 90 days is what it will run. And we just launched it at the start of the year, so it doesn't have a full period yet. Um, but really useful data there for live data for people. Um, we did draw up some kind of fun statistics for people to learn a little bit more about what water levels are like at the lake. And then uh, two new features that we added was uh, pulling from the historical water levels that were compiled uh, from a combination of Central Utah Water as well as the Utah Division of Water Rights. Um, we put together this interactive graph that actually shows um, annual average high levels. What that means that's taken from a monthly average level and then put into an annual high and low. Um, and then uh, we've got that across compromise from 1884 all the way up until 2020 and that will be updated on a regular basis. Um, so kind of fun for people to be able to see what that looks like across time as well as um, we do have a chart on here that just shows um, the average water levels uh, progressing over the last calendar year. So between the live feed showing 90 days worth and what it is today and within whatever the upload speed is of Central Utah Water, I'm not sure if that's like a 10 or 15 minute or an hourly, um, to the full calendar year to show what we're looking at, you know, same month last year moving up through January. Um, and then also a historical chart was added as well. So kind of a fun feature for people to learn more about the lake and see what water levels have looked like. Uh, especially, you know, uh, in a time like this where there's a lot of snow coming down, but it's been kind of a sparse winter and uh, people are wanting to kind of understand what they're looking at. Um, so that is the only update I had. I don't know if there was any questions from that. Anyone has a question? Unmute no. yourself and ask. Good, Sam. Thank you. Okay, I will stop sharing my screen there, but I'll send this link into the chat for anybody who's interested in checking it out. Um, like I said, just kind of a fun resource for anybody who's wanting to learn a little bit more about the water levels. All right. Um, next, we will move on to the Carp June Sucker Northern Pike uh, 
report from Russ uh, Frank Franklin. All right, can you hear me now? Yep. Sorry, I'm double booked today. I didn't realize this meeting was today. So um, just a few updates on some of these things. Uh, carp removal, um, carp removal is still going on. We are gonna be targeting uh, some more of the juvenile carp on the carp removal just to keep up um, with the amount that we've been removing and also to see if we can't keep the population suppressed. Um, Provo River Delta, we are actually ahead of schedule still. Um, this moisture that we are getting right now will slow us down. Um, they have been moving the swamp mats around and you know, we're looking here into the future uh, to get people out there who want it, you know, some of the public to see what's going on, maybe mid, so it, it's all up in flux right now, um, but they are ahead of schedule as far as construction, um, just because of how dry it was up until this last uh, snowstorm that's come through. So now it's slowing down again. So uh, probably next week or the week after we'll have a better idea, um, but they are a few months ahead of schedule. Um, and then the Northern Pike issue, uh, we are starting we have an RFP that will be going out here in probably two days. Uh, we are going to be moving forward and uh, tagging it and finding out more about the Northern Pike and you know, just trying to get a better handle of how many we have out there and, and specifically you know, what's going on in the lake with them. And so that, that's pretty much you know, summed up pretty fast what's going on uh, right now as, as far as the June sucker and all the uh, moving parts going forward. And Russ, didn't I read that you're trying to get as many of the of the anglers out there to take those no northern pike out, except for the ones that are tagged? Exactly. Yep. And so they will have an anchor tag besides uh, the pit tags on there. And yeah, so they will be quite obvious. Um, but right now we've only got nine out there that are that are tagged. So the chances of them actually catching a tag one are pretty slim. But yes, if they do catch those, please re release them back into the wild so we can uh, further the study. They're just about as nasty as the carp. I think yeah. <laughs> we need to get them out. Yeah, it, and like I said, that's what we're trying to figure out with this new study is, you know, where do we stand actually? Maybe that's the kind of contest we have to have. Those pike get pretty big and gnarly looking and you could have a, a northern pike contest to see who can get the largest one. And the largest one? <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it, it would it would be nice. Yeah, and they are fun to catch, but yes, they're not fun to have in Utah Lake. No, no. All right, thank you for that. Does are there any questions yep. for Russ? Seeing none, um, do we have anyone from the public on that would uh, like to comment? Hey, this is Sarah Kiriligan from Saratoga Springs. So I did get a quick update just over text during the meeting. So the trail along the lake, so that is delayed right now because of how wet it is. Um, and then the, uh, well, just the start has been delayed by the contractor because of the moisture out there right now. And so that, that'll start later once it's dried out a little bit. And then as far as the South Marina, Saratoga hired PEC and it's in the design process. Awesome. Thank you. Are there any other comments from the public? I think Keith had something. Keith. Yeah, I just thought maybe if I could, I'd throw in a few things on the, the issues that, that Russ was talking about. CARP, USU just released their CARP population model report that they've been working on for some time. Uh, that's that report comes from Tim Walsworth and Kevin Landum, and so that is up before the recovery program participants for review right now. And so there's some interesting information coming out of that. Uh, some of the things we already know, they knocked the population back significantly through 2018, and that continued the next couple of years, even though the catch rates declined significantly. Then I think through 2018, we were generally over two million pounds a year. We were only in the tens of thousands the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was pretty clear in the field that the high lake levels were interfering with the efficiency and, and their analyses confirmed that. Um, we, uh, we got uh, contacted by DWQ uh, or DEQ, Scott Daly at DEQ a couple of days ago. Last year, we brought to their attention a study by Utah Valley University that indicated that PCB levels in some of the fish in Utah Lake had risen over what the a previous study had indicated. 
And so we had concerns about whether or not we ought to revisit um, doing our own study of some of those fishes and, and see uh, whether we could confirm those results. So Scott reached out to Dale and indicated they were interested in looking at carp. Carp was one of the species from that UVU study that actually declined a little bit, but catfish and bullhead, bullhead especially, were up significantly. So we're going to pursue looking at at least those three species and, and uh, trying to get some more updated results on the PCBs. Obviously, there's a lot of concern with elevated levels in, in fishes that might be consumed by the public, and, and, and carp are one of those. But um, so the, the catfish and bullhead are definitely a concern there. Do we know, uh, what, the the oh, Do we know what the source of the PCBs is? Uh, you know, we don't, but um, we know there's PCBs, I'm sure, locked up in the sediments, but, but, but why, you know, why after you were eliminating the source of the PCBs, why it would rise in some of those other fish is not sure. But one of the, one of the concerns was whether or not the analyses that they had run were comparable to the lab that ran the analyses in the, in the earlier study, Eric. And so that's one of the reasons why we'd like to redo that, the study that was done previously, or at least in some form with a, with a similar kind of a analytical lab to do them. And the original source is assumed to be uh, Geneva steel or something else? The source of the PCB is assumed, but the source of, um, the company or the, the lab that actually did the analyses and the study that where the uh, or they de determined that the PC B levels were were elevated. I think they want to go back and, and use that lab or a lab that was. There might be there might be issues with whether or not the lab that did the more recent analyses was valid or comparable to to what had been done earlier and how accurate it was. No, and that's that all I know sense. about it. But um, yeah, that makes sense. It's the I guess the question is you you had mentioned that now that the source has been diminishing over time, and so I didn't quite catch if you had said it was Geneva or if it or is it some other source that we're attributing that to originally yeah. arriving in the lake. Right, it's nothing like that. And we were surprised. I was surprised to see the results of that. A uh, more recent study that levels had gone up in some fish since the source was eliminated years ago. We would assume that it would gradually decline in these different species, but um, that it hadn't, and at least a couple of them anyway, uh, was concerning enough, especially since we want to develop a comprehensive lake management plan over the next couple of years. And so if we're going to uh, promote the fisheries in the lake, then obviously we want we don't want to have that hanging over our head about whether or not consuming those fish might be harmful to the public. Are there any other potential sources for PCBs besides historic Geneva steel? I still have not heard. Somehow I keep missing your response, but is no, there I mean else? I don't. Not to my knowledge, and so I think that's part of the the question. Not just the analyses of the fish, you know, what what lab does that, but then also how they were collected from what parts of the lake and things of that nature, and that maybe we need to do we need to revisit the whole design of it <laughs> as well. I don't think it's cause for huge alarm. We just want to make sure that it isn't, okay. you know, to our satisfaction. Thank you, Keith. Are there any questions for Keith or is there any other um, public comment? One, one other thing, oh, uh, regarding the PCBs, I don't know if we're done with that. I could continue. Address those. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention, Northern Pike, we're gonna be out in the field tomorrow. It's our first day on the lake. We'll see how that goes with all the snow and the cold and all that, but um, uh, as Russ indicated, we've got nine fish with tags. We have 41 tags remaining, uh, 22 of these larger tags and 19 of the smaller tags. So we're, our goal is definitely to get all those out this year. You never know how it's going to go, but, but we're going to try our darndest to get them all out this year. Um, 
regarding pike, USU has another study report out on the diet and the aging of the pike that they've done in the lake. Uh, there was only a couple of June suckers in the fishes that they analyzed, and I, I can't remember the total, but it was several hundred fish. Uh, if folks that are interested, is like one thing that they noted, which wasn't too surprising, is that the diet was highly influenced by where they caught the fish. You know, and, and Hobble, for example, we know there's a lot of green sunfish in there, and that was a large part of the diet of fish that they caught uh, from Hobble Creek, for example. So. Um, after that report has been reviewed, then I expect that it, that it should be available to folks to, to look at as well. Uh, one last thing on Northern Pike uh, and Jordan River. Yesterday, Dale got a call that somebody caught a Northern Pike in the Jordan River near Bluffdale. And that's the first report that we're aware of, of a pike ever being caught in the Jordan River. And so, and this with the fish was uh, roughly is about 600 millimeters long, something like that. It looked like from the photo, but um, at any rate, the fish was removed, but it's obviously a concern going down the road. Um, and uh, where it'll lead, not sure, but um, obviously there needs to be some mention of that in the, uh, the guidebook about folks that, that might catch a pike there. And, and what the disposition of it should be. Yeah, that's too bad that they found, found them already going that way. Hopefully most people will understand that they ha need to take them out and, and leave them out, don't? Uh, anyways, all right. Any questions for Keith on all of that information or an, any other co public comment? I'm looking, I don't see anyone unmuted. Um, with that, then I will remind you our next scheduled meeting is April 21st at 10 a.m. We may do it at the uh, state park or we may continue to do virtual or we may do a hybrid. I think our the COVID has uh, changed the way we do meetings and we'll go forward uh, accordingly. There's not anything else, Eric, anything else from you? No. Nope. All right, with that, I will, uh, ask for a um, motion to adjourn. Unmute I'll yourself. Make, I'll make that motion. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Scott. Bird. Is there a second? All right, all in favor. We'll see Aye. you on the first. Aye. Thank you.